Hi, I'm here today with Dr. Matthew Bloomfield, who's the Applications Manager for Cobalt Light Systems. Uh, we're going to be talking about this TRS-100 transmission Raman instrument uh, and what you can do with it. So, Matthew, transmission Raman spectroscopy. Can you tell us what it is and what sort of things you can use it for? Okay, so transmission Raman spectroscopy is a vibrational spectroscopic tool and it's really useful for pharmaceutical analysis. We can quantify the amount of API in a tablet, we can do counterfeit detection, looking at amorphous crystalline ratios, that sort of thing. Okay, so uh, if you're doing things like content uniformity, uh, why is transmission Raman a better tool for that? I mean, you can do that using HPLC, for example. You can do it. There are other techniques. HPLC, for example, has um, a lot of consumables involved. Um, it's quite labor intensive, resource intensive, and the measurements mm -hmm. aren't particularly quick. With transmission Raman, the measurements are very fast, and we can get very simple performance in much quicker timescales. Okay, so uh, just how fast can you go? Typically, measurements are um, sub second, mm -hmm. like that. so very fast. Right, okay. Um, so, in terms of uh, how you use the machine, can you show us it in operation? Sure. So, we use these trays. So, with trays like this, and we load our samples. Uh, it could be tablets or capsules. There's no other sample preparation required. So, you, you're using the capsules without uh, taking the powder out? That's right, that's right. And again, we aren't affected by the colour of the capsules or anything like that. We look directly um, kind of through the capsule and we just see the contents. Okay, and what if you had like a coated tablet or something like sure. that? Sure. Uh, coatings aren't affected by the technique either. Um, Equally, we could look at uncoated, but actually, we typically look at coated tablets. Okay, and I know for a technique like near infrared, for example, thickness is quite a problem, so you can only go through a certain amount of material. You know, what's your experience with transmission Raman? Sure, typically, we can look at there are, don't, there are no samples that we really can't do. Um, right. Samples can be. You know, it's a bulk clay. <laughs> it is a bulk clay. Um, really, I've, I've done samples over 10 millimeters thick, and we haven't really been um, hampered by, by sample thickness, mm. for example. Okay, all right. So we load the trays into an instrument like this. Uh, it's a very sort of positive feel to the sample loading tray and we close the door. That's all there's to it and then we'd start the software. Okay, and uh, what's this particular one going to do for us? Okay, this is just a, a simple tool. This is going to measure each of those capsules. Uh, I think each one is uh, just 400 milliseconds per capsule and we get a spectrum from each one. And crucially, it represents the whole volume of that sample. It's not other Raman techniques, just look at the surface. And here, for example, Conventional Raman, we just see the gel capsule. With transmission Raman, actually, we see the contents and not, not the capsule in this case. So you're doing a 400 millisecond measurement, so less than a second, uh, analyzing the contents of a capsule without opening it up. That's right. And if this was a calibration model, then we would actually take all those spectra, build a calibration tool, and then in production, you could take those production samples, measure each one in the same condition, so some mm -hmm. second typically, and quantify the API concentration. Okay. Kind of, once you've built a calibration model, what kind of level of uh, skill do you need to be able to operate it? Oh, really, it's a, it's a very low skill level requirement. So once typically it's happening in the R&D phase, then those researchers would, would build those calibration models. But actually, at the production line, literally it's just a case of taking the samples from production, putting them in the tray, and literally just pressing a couple of buttons with the software, and, and the predictions for each tablet will be uh, produced. Okay, and in terms of the accuracy and precision and so on, how does that compare with HPLC? Oh, very similar. Typically we see um, sort of percent levels of uh, prediction errors, those sorts of things. So very comparable with HPLC and an infrared. Right. Okay, thanks, Matthew. Um, and if we wanted to find out any more information, where would you go? Yeah, loads more information about us and our products at our website, which is cobotlight.com. Great, thank you. Okay.